Right. So my name is Kesan Sheen and I'm comes for Daily Times. My question is, uh, what what is the effect? Uh, what do you think? The, what do you foresee the effects of one man organizations like uh, WikiLeaks on the Secretary of Information given in exemption from disclosure list? Thank you. Uh, what do you think of the WikiLeaks one man expose? <laughs> And that contributing to right to right information is am I right? It's effects on, for example, the secretary of uh, exemption from disclosure list. Three. Excellent. All, all three questions are really very good, and I tried to answer them to the best of my ability. But the answers to all the three are very very wide, huge. Uh, but uh, let me start with the question of the Official Secrets Act. The Right to Information Act talks about overriding all other laws. Which are, which are, uh, which are uh, contrary to the right to information law, except the uh, and I told you the clause which talks about the Official Secrets Act. Now, the Official Secrets Act, uh, this this uh, this this law has sort of fallen between the two. It should have revealed the Official Secrets Act. In fact, the Administrative Reforms Commission of 2010 of India, I think it was, uh, that recommended that the Official Secrets Act should be scrapped. The government of India agreed that they would amend the Official Secrets Act, but then they neither scrapped it nor did they amend it. So uh, we are still waiting for the amendment to come. But in the meantime, the uh, Official Secrets Act has been considerably eroded because, if, if you remember, as I had read out to you, the uh, clause in the Right to Information Law is that Official Secrets Act will still be overridden. Uh, uh, Notwithstanding any of these exemptions, they are easier to all the Official Secrets Act 1923. A public authority may allow access to information if public interest in disclosure outweighs the harm to the public, to the, to the protected interest. Now, under the Official Secrets Act, if any interest is protected, but it is found that, 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 the, that the public interest outweighs that political, that, that, that uh, protected interest. That information can still be given, and a lot of information which is otherwise protected under the, uh, under the Official Secrets Act has in fact been given. So it has had the effect of eroding the public, of the, the, the uh, uh, Official Secrets Act, but not of doing away with it. And the Official Secrets Act continues to be an irritant. I would agree with you that in an independent country like Pakistan or like India, an Official Secrets Act has no place. Because you read the Official Secrets Act, it is an act designed to protect the government from the public. Now at that time they were ruling India, they, were, they wanted to be protected from the Indian public. They had the war of 1857 and so on. Uh, and, the, and the national movement rising and all kinds of things. So they, they need to be protected from the, from the public. But obviously, a government, an independent government, does not need to be protected from its own public. And therefore, its law is out of out of date and should be uh, and should be should be reviewed altogether. Uh, but that has been a recommendation for some time, surely in your country and ours, and is really for the government to address the issue. Because although although our as I said our uh, uh, our administrative reforms commission actually recommended that, the government has not actually done so. So that is so far as the Official Secrets Act is concerned. Uh, but uh, uh, the uh, the record not being there. Now, a question of corruption. If there's no record at all of the corruption, then the, then the act has not taken place. Obviously, there has to be some record which you've done away with. I mean, you have, you, you, you have given the, the you have issued a, uh, an order uh, or giving giving uh, giving a ten, uh, awarding the tender to the person who was the, was the most expensive tenderer. You've given him the order, and he then that record has to be there. That we, what, what are the tenders? Where are the tenders? I want to see those tenders. So the corruption can only occur when they, when, when, when something actually happened to transgress the, the, uh, the documentation which actually existed. That's, that's, that's what, that's what you would describe as corruption. Now, how much the corruption? Yes. I paid, I paid you 250,000 rupees, then nobody got a record of how much I paid you. So you can say that, well, you can't take the stand that, well, I didn't take any money and there's no record of any money that's been paid to me and therefore no, no, no corruption has taken place. Because I will tell you that I'm very sorry, there is a tender here for 10 rupees and you've given the tender for 100 rupees. So obviously there's corruption, you have to answer for it. So that will be there. Obviously the record of the money spent on money transacted, that will never be there. 
the extent of the corruption will never be there. But you, you, suspect, you suspect the corruption on the basis of documentation, and you prove the corruption on the basis of the documentation. And then when you start uh, inquiring into the matter, you will have witnesses, others who will come and tell you. Now, the other question was on the, on the question of WikiLeaks. The world is moving in that direction. I think that it is important for governments to realize the world, because of information technology, is moving in that direction. Not, not, you don't have to ask me what do I think of this one man. The question is, that I will say it is now possible, it is now in, in this, in this day, in this world of today, it is possible for even one man to shape the world in the way that Mr. Asamke has done so. And now the, this young uh, Mr. Snowfield, or uh, what is Snowfield, he has done so. All of the basis of information technology. You cannot turn that information technology back. Therefore, a right to information law is necessary so that you can regulate the kind of information that is actually disclosed to the public. If you try to, try to keep everything in your pocket, then the pocket will develop a hole inside, inside. It's already developed that hole because the, the information technology is there. So that is what I would say. Whether it is, it is right to have that information, whether it's a good thing that the person has the information, not, I will not go into the merits of that at all. It's a good thing that Mr. 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 Sange should have that information, or Mr. Snowfresh should have that information. I will not go into that. As a bureaucrat myself, I would say, no, it's not a good thing at all. But the fact is, that the, the world is moving, the, the world of, of the world's technology is moving in that direction. We may say that we deny that, we cut off ourselves from that world's technology, but we keep our country that way. So you have to have that, you will need it, and if you are going to use it, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to uh, also cater for, you know, safeguard your, your system for working in it. Uh, but first we need to go. Sir, while appreciating you for uh, giving so much information of, about Indian society and Indian information act, you especially, especially mentioned Jammu and Kashmir state as vote of Indian constitution. But sir, my question is very touchy for you, that how a Kashmiri can get information about official records or these missing uh, relatives or uh, who are being uh, killed by your forces brutally. Uh, uh, can you reply to this question? Very good question. And uh, let me answer this, uh, this, this way because this will take a little, uh, I mean, uh, and uh, since I have been dealing with it directly. I mentioned to you that certain organizations are exempt from the Act. They don't come under the Act. But in terms of human rights violation and corruption, they come under the Act. Uh, I have been, in fact, uh, even when this law was not there, when I was, in, I was Chief Information Commissioner, and since I've served in Kashmir, I have lots of Kashmiri friends, I, I repeatedly asked them, please bring these cases before us. Uh, only one case came before me. And in that case, the person that disappeared, he was a young government official, he disappeared in 1991 and never was found again. And he was picked up by some BSF unit. We were able to trace it out, we, thanks to the Right to Information Act, we were able to trace it out to the fact that the, the particular battalion which was there, that battalion had moved somewhere else. They had, they had record of the fact that this boy had been picked up. But what happened to him, uh, they, they didn't have that record because the records had been destroyed. So now it's 1991, and I was, I was I was uh, dealing with the case in 2008. So uh, the records have been destroyed. And you know, it's in government have a system of destroying old records. Now, they had the, that, that battalion had been transferred out to the valley. They were down, but now we traced them. Where have they gone and all that? All that was there. The current commandant of that unit who was there in that particular village traced them. He gave this information. But that particular unit said that those records have all been destroyed. So he cannot tell where the boy has gone. It is true that there are complaints of missing persons and so forth in Kashmir. And the effort should be to try and retrace those persons as to where they are. Even if they have, even if they have died or something, the families have every right to know that what has happened to, the, to, such, to such persons. But unfortunately, in those cases, the records are not there. And the law was not there at the particular time. 
So the, that, that's the kind of case which he's talking about, with a record is not there. Now we can, I can't say that now you gen, I can also say the generated record, but there has to be some basis on which to generate the record. And in these kind of situations, no such record is, 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 is actually kept. Where such records can be kept and are kept, then they will be traced out. So for the future, it can work well. The, 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 now the India had no right to information act when the actual incidents occurred, which I've talked about. But, but they are usually of that early, of the early 90s. They have happened after that. In uh, later cases, they have been also discovered. And there have been rulings that have been made against them by courts and by organizations, commissions. But in the earlier cases, there has been a problem. And therefore, you have a whole movement over there for missing persons, trying to face out missing persons. But these are the difficulties which cannot be resolved under the right to information law. Uh, in Kiba, if the government, a public official in India makes a statement or uh, discloses some information, and that information may have an implication of uh, some, you see, international relations. I'm referring to some recent, uh, maybe officially, uh, maybe some information was released by him, or it was his comments. Does it come under the secret act that he should be charged, and uh, or, uh, how do you treat such a case? It depends upon the kind of information he's given. Uh, as I told you, the, the information which concerns relations with other with foreign countries is not to be given. I also told you that, of course, some, some people feel that Abjobi Mahatma has for Bhattihi do. So if somebody gives that kind of If it's a comment, if it's an opinion by somebody about something or the other, it will not really, uh, unless it is recorded, and record, it will not amount to information. Opinion does fall under information, but it's a recorded opinion, which is which is which is information, not an information. I don't like that verse very much. Then I said, "How they now? I want that." That will not be treated as information. But if some something has been disclosed, which is a, which is supposed to be a secret, then he or she can can be prosecuted under the official secrets act. The official secrets act is still there, as I mentioned. Uh, but uh, uh, the question is that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the disclosure may or may not be the disclosure of, of what is defined as, in, uh, as an official secret. So in that case, uh, the, the department could take disciplinary action saying that, well, this is the kind of information that is not disclosable under the Right to Information Law, and therefore the Right to Information Act does not have any clause about disclosing something when you're not supposed to disclose it. So my question is that does this law give protection to the whistleblower? Ah, that is another very good question. This does not give protection to the whistleblowers. And there have been very many incidents of whistleblowers being actually done, done in in India. Not so much with regard to central government, because central government doesn't really deal with day-to-day -day matters of the states. Those are usually in the states, but there have been a large number of whistleblowers being actually done in. And therefore, the government of India is not thinking of Whistleblowers Act. A Whistleblowers Act goes hand in hand with the Right to Information Act. When you're making the Right to Information, <coughs> when you're making the Right to Information a right, then that means that you also have to have a Whistleblowers Law, because then a person who exercises that right, he exercises right to information by asking for and giving out information, which is embarrassing to a political leader. To a, to, a, to, a, to, a, to a to a to a to a business house or to a bureaucrat. In that case, that person requires to be protected, and the government can then recognize this, and therefore the Whistleblowers Act is there. And I'd like to also tell you, the Whistleblowers Act is really a product of the Right to Information Act because there's a widespread participation in the formulation of that Whistleblowers Act, which is something that we had ruled in the in the, in the Central Information Commission that laws which affect the public. The public has a right to know about that law even, if, even before it becomes a law. And so now it is mandatory on the government to actually disclose laws on their websites and other things even before they actually pass, send it to the cabinet for approval. Once the cabinet is approved, then it becomes confidential. But before that, it is a matter of public debate. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Asta Abad. I'm running a candidate for the Chimkar Dilada. Uh, right to know and right to information is one of our core program areas. 
Uh, my question is uh, about uh, the availability of our available information. When you said that if there is no information, no need to create information. But what if information was there, but it is no more available? For example, either it is tampered or it is destroyed by some, some person. So does the law actually have anyone responsible for that destruction of information or tampering with the information? There is that the penalty clause that I mentioned to you covers that. Mm -hmm. If any information is tampered with, then the person becomes liable to penalty. The person who does that, tampering with penalty. Uh, the, uh, uh, it's also, you see that, that's also a wider question. That information may be there, but the person has not found it. But then that is not the fault of the, 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 the law. The person has to find it. He cannot claim that, well, I tried to look for it as I couldn't find it, yes, I'm not giving it to you. That, that's no argument. The point is that the information is never there. No such information, no such record was kept. You and I have had a meeting, and that meeting was never recorded by anybody. No minutes were ever kept. Now, third person, who will tell somebody that when they miss after, I've said this to Mr. Vajahata Iwila. Then you can say, I, I want to know, and it, 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 then it has to be on record. You said, then we never kept, we didn't keep any record of that discussion. <coughs> Therefore, we cannot give this information. That's the kind of thing that you can't create it. You can't it, then go back and say, okay, now I will re rewrite what I, I think we discussed on that day to create that information. You're not supposed to do that. Because very often that's being done also by the, by the departments. You see, they were asked something, they had not recorded it. So they should have recorded it, but they had not recorded it. So until now, that doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. It has to be, whatever is recorded has to be given. Okay. Now, even if that information is information, which should have been destroyed, it's fallen into that, every department has time gaps, uh, gaps in 10 years to dis destroy such information, in 15 years to destroy such information. And it already passed that time lapse. So you can't argue that, well, I should have destroyed it five years ago, but I didn't destroy it, so I'm not going to give it to you now. You can't do that. Because the information is held by you, any information is held by you, you have to give it. And therefore, in the case of the Supreme Court also, in the Delhi High, 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 High Court, I ruled that even the, even the judges, even, even the judges' notes, which they note their scribbles, that is information which has to be given. Oh, oh even that? Yeah. Uh, on is there some links between RTI and violence? And violence? Yeah, and violence. Yeah, I read one of your interviews you were you talking about RTI and violence in Naxalite areas. Ah, yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing. RTI and violence in Naxalite areas is very interesting. I'm glad you raised that question. Because I had raised the question and the theme of my talk was in fact how this has strengthened democracy in India. And you've taken me back to that theme. The point is that both those, the, the ones who are campaigning for the right to information and the Maoists have in fact the same overall objective. I mean, you may, I may be very unpopular for saying this. The overall objective is the government is not answerable, the government is not accountable. The things have happened with me which should not have happened and the government cannot be held to account. So the Maoists will say they destroy this government. The RTI activists will say I will seek the information and seek recourse under the law. That is the connection between Maoism and the right to information. The right, both, both of them are an expression of, of uh, dissatisfaction with the existing framework of governance. Both of them have expressed them in their own and different ways. So that's what I meant by the, by the relationship. Not that I believe that if you become, if you use the right to information, you become a Maoist. You become a Maoist. If you don't use the right to information, you become a Maoist. So to the Maoists, I would say, please use the right to information and stop using the government. Okay. On, is that okay? Or you want to give an RTI to Pakistan military? <laughs> <laughs>